We go across live to Rahul in just a bit, but our big focus this evening is on Prime Minister Modi's US visit. The Prime Minister hosted heads of states of Germany, Brazil and Japan to push the G4 permanent seats in the UN Security Council. Speaking at the summit, Modi said the United Nations represents a century from the past and must include new members to keep itself relevant to modern times. Even as the world watched the G4's aggressive push, Modi's efforts came in for criticism from some seniors within his own party. Take a look. It was the most anticipated summit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's United States visit. Hosting the G4 summit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi once again made a big push, demanding a permanent place at United Nations high table. The Security Council must include the world's largest democracies, major locomotives of the global economy and voice from all the major countries. It will carry greater... Reiterating the call for reforms at the United Nations, Prime Minister also underlined the need to fast-forward reforms. The reform of the Security Council within a fixed time frame had become an urgent and important task. Making terror the top agenda, Prime Minister dubbed terrorism as the new concern. It's a question to be decided later as to who finds that earlier hot seat on the Security Council amongst these four aspirants of India, Japan, Germany and Brazil. For now, it's a collective pressure on especially the P5 nations to change with the changing times. But even as Prime Minister Modi made a major thrust for permanent seat at Security Council, voices of concern emerged within his own party. Whenever important issues have come up, we have been kind of isolated and uh, it's, we have always depended on Russia to use its veto power to bail us out. And today Russia and India are at variance with each other. This is the biggest letdown therefore. This is the biggest letdown and the most disappointing fact which has emerged out of this. With India repeatedly underscoring that the expansion and reform of the 15 nation council is pivotal and G4 nations echoing India's demand, Will the permanent seat at the UN high table turn into reality for India? Bureau Report, India Today. Hello and welcome. We are here in San Jose and in a short while from now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be landing here. This is the Fairmont Hotel where he'll be staying and right outside the lawns of the Fairmont Hotel is the annual San Jose marathon it'll happen tomorrow today is when everyone's coming to collect their badges and you can see this can only happen in california and nowhere else where the prime minister is staying 20 feet away from where we are and everybody outside here in sunny california is enjoying this beautiful day and there's a big picnic on we have a lot lined up for you but i first want to go across to my colleague smita sharma she's joining us from uh, new york and she's got the indian permanent representative to the united nations with her We've seen the Prime Minister Smita make a very forceful intervention on uh, the expansion of the United Nations Security Council. But realistically speaking, is there at all a chance of this coming through in a, in a time frame which is known or is this just an endless loop like everything else with the UN? Well, Rahul, you know, it has mostly been an endless loop so far, but at least the one good indication has been that the the, the text-based negotiations, they're all set to commence now. Uh, and, you know, let's get in a word straight away from Ambassador Mukherjee himself, India's permanent representative to the UN. Ambassador Mukherjee, you know, this G4 summit today that was held in the room just right behind you in the hotel, uh, four powerful leaders of four strong democracies sending out a message right at the heart of the UN headquarters, uh, you know, where the UN headquarters is located in New York. How does it change things? Does it make things much more time-bound now? Are you hopeful of that? Well, uh, it, is, uh, it changes things in the sense that uh, you have now a high visibility of uh, four leaders of four big countries uh, which have been arguing for reform of the Security Council for the last 10 years coming together and asking that this process now go on the basis of the text on the table and conclude by the end of the 70th uh, uh, session of the General Assembly. So with the concrete outcome and fixed timeline, I think uh, there's a momentum which uh, is now very visible. But 
you know, Ambassador Mukherjee, all those four participants there, India, Germany, Japan, Brazil, they're all four aspirants themselves. So, uh, you know, how is it going to be like? Who gets the first ticket as and when the ticket for entry is allowed? Well, uh, I, I think I would put it uh, another way. I would put it uh, in the way that these four countries have catalyzed the momentum which now has brought together more than 120 countries who all want reform. So it's not now a question of who gets uh, among these four countries onto the high table of permanent membership. It's a question of actually expanding the Security Council, creating the extra seats. And then it is for any country which wants to become a permanent member or a non-permanent member for those additional seats to seek a democratic way to get there by fighting elections. One final question, Ambassador Mukherjee, before I let you go. Uh, you know, there is a large, in fact, a lobby that would say that the UN at the end of the day has no relevance, you know, if the P5 countries still hold the key to the veto. And if you're not willing to share the veto, how does a permanent seat really make a difference? Even as a non-permanent member, you're still doing the same thing. And that is actually the point which brings the G4 together because the veto or the use of the veto has been uh, conditioned and grounded by the politics of 1945. We are saying that in the year 2015, you have to have a different way of dealing with crisis and with disputes. And each of the four countries has played a role in shouldering global responsibility. So therefore, I think that all these issues, when the negotiations start, will come up and it will uh, reflect itself in the outcomes which are adopted at this end of the process. Wish you luck with that for now. Many thanks, Ambassador Ashok Mukherjee. So Rahul, clearly, you know, uh, while the G4 was held at the ministerial level in 2004, at least upgrading it to the level of the heads of governments uh, does bring it a, a significant momentum of sorts and that added pressure on the uh, P5 nations that this is high time that you change with a changed world. Thank you very much, Smita, for joining us with that update. Finally, we're seeing some forward movement on the United Nations Security Council. We have a written text for the first time. The Prime Minister is on his way. He'll be here in San Jose in a couple of hours from now. He has an action-packed day lined up for you. There's the big Digital India dinner this evening where several top CEOs will be coming. He'll also be visiting the Tesla headquarters. Tesla, of course, has been pioneering rechargeable cars which are completely fuel efficient and remember in california that is always a big priority trying to find more ecologically sensitive ways of getting things done i want to get you now excerpts from an interview i recorded with kailash k one of the most soulful voices in indian music he's here in california because he'll be performing at the big modi event come sunday morning come sunday night here and monday morning uh, in india and uh, he thinks that ever since the Prime Minister Modi has taken over, the way the world looks at India has changed. Here is an India Today exclusive chat with Kailash Kher. So, first of all, tell us how will you be in San Jose's performance of Narendra Modi? How will you be in San Jose's performance? After the show, I realized that the event is after a month, I realized that the event is the community reception for PM Narendra Modi Ji. तब मुझे समझ आया वाव मैन इट्स गोइंग टू बी रियली गुड क्योंकि एक तो जोशीला एक हमारे यहाँ का नेतृत्व करने वाला एक ऐसा देश को नेतृत्व जिसको बहुत ही गहरा जो पहली बार मेरी नजरों में एक ऐसा मतलब कमाल की एनर्जी वाला इंसान आया है उस गद्दी पर वेर एवर मोदी जी इज गोइंग राहुल ही इज टेकिंग दल्चर ऑल्सो फॉरवर्ड None of the Prime Minister or any of a supreme leader of our country has taken our culture abroad with pride. You have sung more than 1,000 songs now? I have sung more than 700 songs. Which song is the most fit for you in your opinion? When the love of 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 the love खूब लगा लो पहरे रस्ते रब खोले यही इश्क दी मर्जी है यही रब दी मर्जी है तेरे बिन जीना कैसा हाँ खुद गर्जी है तूने क्या कर डाला मर गई मैं मिट गई मैं हो हो जी हाँ हाँ जी हो गई मैं तेरी दीवानी 
दीवानी दीवाने कहेंगे अपने आप को मोदी के हाँ मैं मैं हर ऐसे शख्स का दीवाना हूँ जो इस देश के लिए इस संस्कृति के लिए और हमारे कल्चर के लिए हमारे बदलाव के लिए हमारे बैटरमेंट के लिए सचमुच संवेदनशील होकर सो Amongst the companies the prime minister will be visiting is the Google headquarters in Mountain View. I had an opportunity to go to the Google headquarters to speak to some of the Indians, the Desis over there. They call themselves the Googlers Indian Network. The very bright, bright, vibrant community of Indians working in Google. It's also called the best place in the world to be working in and I found out just why you've got food you've got drinks you've got games you could just be in the middle of an entertainment arcade instead of being in the middle of a workplace and they're looking forward to welcoming prime minister modi lee in the kitchen of the badal cafe the one indian style restaurant over here it's run by chef irfan who used to be with the morya hotel before he decided to come here and set up this cafe at google chef Thank you very much Thank for allowing us into your kitchen. Thank you. It's great to be here. I saw lots of people coming in and loving your biryani. Today is the big biryani day, huh? Today is the big biryani day. This is the one dish that everybody across Google comes for. Uh, we will cook for more than or approximately 2,000 people every day. Biryani day. On a usual day, we will cook for about 1,100 to about 1,500. But biryani being so popular, it will we will serve close to 2,000. And the Badal Cafe just now. I've got Shrey Gupta from Chandigarh. How long have you been at Google? Around four years now. You love the fact that they've got uh, Indian food. You're eating home cooked biryani. Yes, um, like it's one of the big perks to work here. Like you get food, like Indian food. You don't miss home, back home, and um, that's a very good factor to keep you happy here at work. And I think that's all <laughs> what Googlers love and enjoy. You're excited about the fact that the prime minister is coming to the Google campus? Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely, it's a big, uh, uh, like it's a big thing for us that Prime Minister Modi is taking an incentive to connect with the Silicon Valley. So many Indians work here at Google and at other companies, and it's definitely uh, very nice to see that uh, this community is finally getting attention. And what um, would you like to see the prime minister do, uh, which would make you feel that you know we can produce a Google back home? Uh, I think it's uh, already in the works. Like it's like it's a slow process right now. people are doing uh, people are going back to india and doing great things uh, there are many indian companies coming up so there's like it's already happening and as our ceo sundar said in his video message yesterday google is already trying to do a lot of stuff for india like offline and uh, uh, slow connection speed apps so we are already trying that and i think uh, this kind of opening of uh, dialogue will really help speed it up thank you very much let me not hold you back from your biryani no, thank <laughs> no, you that's fine thank you